Next speaker is Professor uh, Francesco Papaladi from the University of Roma C, and he'll talk about local conditions for the primitive lactotic conjecture. Hello, everybody. Um, I just arrived um, one and a half hours ago, so I, I would like to apologize if I'm a bit confused. I'm not sure where I am, and especially what time is it. But uh, fortunately, there is a watch there. Um, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, the, the Indian part of the family, for uh, organizing this, uh, this event for them here and for letting me be part of this. I'm very happy. I'm a student of Ram, and um, of course, Ram has been very influential in my life in many respects, especially mathematics, but on, not only mathematics. I, was, um, I had planned um, a different talk, and, uh, but uh, then um, just uh, less than a week ago, I figured that even uh, if uh, this topic uh, it's unfinished, uh, I, I think uh, it's, um, it's uh, so close to stuff uh, that Ram has done and um, topics to which Ram has given such a fundamental contribution that I, I really felt uh, that uh, I, I wanted to talk about this here. So uh, this uh, Julio Melilao is, uh, is a student in, uh, in my department. And uh, OK, so. I guess I pressed everything here. Maybe this is not the right. Oh, OK. And then? Center. Yes, yeah, center. But then if I want, oh, OK. Super, thank you very much. So I will start with, uh, with uh, art and conjecture, which uh, we all know is very dear to Ram. And um, this is one of uh, the very important problems in, uh, in number theory, uh, to which Ram has given uh, um, a quasi-resolution. I, I will not quote uh, um, the results of them. We all know them very well, but uh, I, I will just mention them when, whenever we meet them. And um, this, is, uh, this is the general form of the Arting conjecture, not exactly the way Arting stated it in 1927, but uh, modified according to suggestions of, of Lehmer. And uh, this is a, a compact form uh, to write it down. And um, well, um, apart from the fact that there, there are some complicated uh, formulas to tell you what, what this density is, this is the density of the primes um, for which uh, a given number A, rational number, is a primitive root. And um, uh, this number here has uh, two, two uh, factors. The second factor here is usually called the naive density which is an infinite order product. And there's a, a rational factor here. This is uh, sometimes called the entanglement factor. And um, what we can notice here is that um, certainly, even if you might think uh, that um, there's something wrong in stating the Artin conjecture also in the case where A is a perfect square, but if A is a perfect square, it happens that uh, both this factor and this factor are zero. And so still the conjecture um, holds. Actually, the conjecture is proven in this, uh, in this trivial case, but uh, uh, this is uh, not really interesting. And, uh, but but uh, nevertheless, uh, um, you know, uh, this, uh, this constant has uh, sufficient uh, structure so that it tells us also some cases in which the conjecture doesn't make uh, sense or, or, or has trivial sense. And next, um, I would like to mention the Langtrotter conjecture. Uh, Ram worked on both Harting and Langtrotter conjecture in, uh, in, um, in uh, the same years. And, uh, and um, it was uh, very impressive, the contribution that he gave uh, to the primitive point Langtrotter conjecture. Now, there is, uh, there's several Langtrotter conjectures. So this one 
uh, it's not the one that uh, receives the most of the attention. So I will, I will spend quite, quite a bit of time uh, explaining things about this conjecture. So I'm setting this here in the case where, where the elliptic curve is not a CM elliptic curve. And uh, I'm uh, adding to the discriminant of the elliptic curve the denominator of one point, which has been chosen not to be a torsion point. And then, in a, in a very <coughs> analog fashion to the Artin conjecture, um, I, uh, Lang and Trotter, they stated uh, this conjecture which predicts the, the density of the primes for which P is, uh, is a primitive point. So by the way, I will call P primitive without mentioning for which prime is primitive if it's primitive or believed to be primitive for infinitely many primes. So a primitive point is a point which is a, a, a generator for the group of rational points modulo P for infinitely many primes. And again here, there's a similar structure of the constant. There's uh, this uh, naive density and there's this uh, rational entanglement factor. And uh, while the naive density can be computed, um, and it starts with the double four zero one. And certainly, uh, what, what we know is that uh, this uh, entanglement factor has to be zero when uh, all the two torsion points are rational, since uh, this group here is not cyclic, and so there's no hope for P to generate it. And so, uh, of course, in, in the definition of, of this half of EP, it has to be merged in the fact that, uh, that one has to get zero in, in this situation. And there's a similar uh, conjecture, uh, meaning uh, with a different uh, uh, naive density for CM elliptic curves. But I will tell something much more precise about this a little later. And uh, here's another case in which uh, uh, certainly alpha has to be equal to zero. In the case in which uh, P is K times another rational point, and uh, the GCD between this K and the number of torsions which are rational is bigger than one, then P doesn't have any hope to generate because its order divides uh, this proper divisor of the group order. So these are two cases in which certainly alpha sub E of P has to be zero, okay? And uh, I, I will, I'd like to mention a bit of, uh, of the statistics about the work which has been done in, in these two conjectures. So um, in this conjecture. So first of all, it, was, uh, it appeared in the bulletin of AMS four pages uh, in 1977. And uh, there are, you know, if you just look at uh, the reviews uh, in, 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 in math reviews where, where this paper has been quoted, you just get five. And one of them uh, is, uh, is the work of uh, Rajiv and Ram, of which I, I'll talk more later. And uh, well, 17 from bibliographies, okay? So not that much. And if you want to compare this with the, with the Artin conjecture, then uh, you have uh, 46 in the reviews where, where the paper that I'm, uh, that I'm using has a, uh, as a reference, uh, in, like, uh, like the, the base paper it would be the paper of Hooley of the, of the um, resolution of the Artin conjecture as a consequence of the Riemann hypothesis. So that paper has been uh, quoted 46 times in reviews and 97 times in bibliographies. So you, you may think uh, that uh, not, not much work has been done on the first two. Uh, well, I don't know why, but uh, um, also, there's a, bit, there's a lot of confusion also be, between the names, because nowadays when one talks about the uh, Langtrotter conjecture, there's conferences about the Langtrotter conjecture, but it's not this one. It's usually the one on the distribution of, uh, of, of Frobenius, of the trace of Frobenius. So, uh, I don't know, but uh, certainly some, some more work should be done about this. And there is uh, also, um, I would say, a cousin conjecture, maybe an ankle conjecture, I don't know. Uh, anyways, it's re related. I, I attribute this uh, to Sir. Actually, Sir, uh, I think um, while stating it or earlier than that, he proved that uh, um, the Riemann hypothesis implies this asymptotic formula here. 
for the number of primes for which uh, the reduction, the group of points modulo p is cyclic. And so he, he proves this asymptotic formula. And once again, there's, uh, there's a naive density and there's uh, an entanglement factor. And uh, here you have an approximation for the naive density. And uh, of course, if um, all the two rational points, all the, uh, the two torsion points are rational, uh, this gamma has to be zero. But actually, this is uh, due to, well, uh, first of all, I'd like to quote the result of 83 from Ram. Actually, you know, I was not aware of this. I read it uh, from another paper of Ram uh, that uh, in 1983, uh, Ram eliminated the generalized Riemann hypothesis uh, in the case of CM curves. But well, on the CM curves, um, a different definition for the density should be made. But anyways, uh, the analog result is known uh, uh, for CM curves. And uh, 1990, Rajiv Gupta and, and, and Lam, they, they proved the following uh, quite amazing result, uh, that um, you have infinitely many primes for which the reduction mod P is cyclic as long as this obvious necessary condition is satisfied. So this is, um, this is telling that uh, this is quite, quite, quite a uh, satisfactory uh, result. And in 2004, both Ram and Alina, they have a new paper, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, new results. They improve uh, error terms, and, uh, and um, both in the case of CM curve, um, non-CM curve, uh, and um, okay, well, that's, uh, that's it for the, for the source conjecture. Here, I want to show you just, uh, just for fun, uh, some, uh, some, uh, some computations that, are, that, that I've made recently. So if you take, uh, a, instead of A, you take primes which are con not congruent to one modulo four, then uh, for all these primes, the formula for the density related to the Artin conjecture is, uh, is just uh, the Artin constant, which is given by this formula. And uh, if you count that up to two to the 25, you get this, uh, tiny little errors. And so you might wonder whether you, you can have a similar approximation uh, for, uh, for the other two conjectures. So if you take B, this is uh, the lang trotter conjecture for primitive points, and, you, and, you, and you, in, you test this conjecture for primes up to 2 to the 25 to, with curves of rank 1 without torsion and, uh, and, um, and uh, Galois the Galois action on L torsion points are always subjective, these are all source curves, then you get a, a very similar approximation. So I guess no deduction can be made by, by these two tables, but uh, certainly, um, I mean, uh, the empirical data, it's as convincing for both for the Lanfrater conjecture and for the source conjecture regarding uh, uh, the density formula. Um, so, I would like to spend some time to give the definition of the, of the density which comes uh, uh, with the lang trotter conjecture. And so this is based uh, on the study of, uh, of the so-called group of M, M roots of, of P. So this would be the P, was, would be a non-torsion rational point of the elliptic curve. And this is the set of points which M times themselves give P. And there's M squares m squared of that, and this can be seen uh, in, I mean, this is one, one of the, the things uh, you, you prove while, uh, you know, teaching a, a bit of uh, elliptic curves. And uh, well, one way to see it is that uh, this uh, set here is the fiber of this, uh, the endomorphism multiplication by, by, by m. This is degree m square, and also very, very uh, uh, explicitly, you can uh, write down uh, the formula for multiplication by m by using the division polynomials. And when you, when you do this, uh, you realize that uh, actually uh, the abscisses of the point in the square root of p are, are roots of, of this polynomial here, which uh, is known to be separable and has degree m squared. And once you have the abscissa from here, you can, you can uh, compute uniquely uh, the y, and, uh, and therefore there's always m squared of this. 
And uh, this, uh, this, uh, the set here is also uh, the structure of, uh, of uh, an affine space, uh, um, quote affine space, is Z bar M Z affine space, uh, simply because um, if you fix one point Q zero, which I'm gonna fix for, for the rest, for the next 20 minutes, then every other mth root of p can be obtained by this fixed q0 summing an m torsion point. And this gives uh, to this set that is a uh, fine space, kind of a fine space structure. And uh, uh, having this structure, we can uh, talk about the affine group, which would be the semi-direct semi product of the group of automorphisms of uh, E of m times translation. And the action of uh, an affine uh, um, transformation is the following. So an affine transformation is a pair, um, a transformation of the m torsion points, comma, a translation. And the action is, uh, is, uh, is the usual action of uh, on affine spaces, right? So this is it's coming just, uh, uh, just by the fact that uh, um, fixing q0 and summing up all m torsion points, you, you, you you have uh, all mth root of p. And uh, well, there's also a Galois action on, 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 this, uh, on this set, on this affine space. And uh, well, the Galois action, of course, is given by the field obtained by um, uh, adding to q all, all the coordinates of the, of the points in, in one over mp. And uh, of course, this is a splitting field of this polynomial, so it's a, it's a, it's a Galois field. And um, it, the theory um, says that uh, in, inside this field, you have uh, the field of the M torsion field. And this is very easy to see. It's simply because if you take two points in the set, the difference of these two points is defined over the same field. And uh, it's an M torsion point. So certainly, you have this inclusion. And, uh, and inside this field, uh, there's, uh, there's a special subgroup, the, the group of calling, uh, of called, uh, the group called of Galois translation. So this would be the subgroup of GM of, of the, uh, the Galois elements that fix uh, all the M torsion points, okay? And I'm, call, I'm calling this uh, the, the Galois translation subgroup. The way, the reason for which this is the name is that because you have this, uh, um, um, this isomorphism between TM and, uh, and the subgroup of, of EM given by this map. If you take uh, um, an mth root of P, then you write it uh, as, uh, as, um, um, as an m, uh, m torsion point plus the fixed Q0, and then tau, uh, which is an element that fixes R, um, then you, 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 can, uh, you can view it as this map, and uh, uh, simply because that's, that's, what it, what, that's the way it has to, to act. And this provides uh, an immersion between this group, uh, this particular subgroup of GM and, uh, and E of M. And uh, it's, it's a normal subgroup, simply because the quotient is, uh, is, uh, is the Galois group of the M torsion points. And there is uh, a theorem of Pashmakov, which um, also Ram and Rajiv quote. Actually, uh, the, the, the paper appears in 1970 and it's only four pages long, but uh, then there's a much uh, longer paper where all the results are covered in, in a much uh, more general context by Ribet. And, but uh, what, what tells us this paper is that these Galois translations, except for uh, um, a finitely supported uh, set of them, um, are always uh, isomorphic to E of M. Uh, well, this is kind of a funny statement because it has some resemblance with, uh, resemblance with the Sears Open Mapping Theorem, right? Except uh, this is for Galois translation, okay? So I'm gonna use this also in the definition of, of delta EP. And um, so I have a GM, I have this normal subgroup, and now I'm going to consider another subgroup. So this is uh, uh, the subgroup of, of those Galois elements which fix the field generated by that fixed point there. And uh, well, of course, uh, uh, HM and TM are, uh, um, they have a trivial intersection simply because uh, 
uh, well, I guess uh, the, the composite of these two fields is the full field. And, um, and actually, this HM is isomorphic to the Galois group of, um, of the M torsion points. And uh, so this is, uh, um, this is actually the, um, how, how it acts on uh, 1 over M over P. And therefore, you have this isomorphism. So the bottom line is that GM can be thought itself as a semi product uh, of HM and TM. And, uh, and uh, therefore, it sits in the affine group. Therefore, and uh, the open mapping theorem of Sir and the Bashmakov bound tells us that actually this Galois group is the full affine group, except for uh, finitely many primes. Okay? So this uh, takes a bit of time, but uh, this is what's needed. Um, let's review what happens in the, in the case of primes. If you have a prime and uh, you take, uh, if, you, if L is prime and you take a prime that does not divide L or delta prime and, and you set sigma P to be the Frobenius element, uh, then, uh, well, we know that L divides the order if and only if uh, this has an element of order L and, and the four gamma P as uh, one as an eigenvalue. And uh, when gamma P is exactly the identity, then all the L torsion points uh, survive inside E of FP, and therefore, in this case, L divides um, the index of P. But in the other cases, when gamma P is not the identity and still has one as eigenvalue, then uh, L divides this index if and only if uh, the Frobenius fixes one of the points in the Lth root of P. And uh, if, you, if you spell out this condition, uh, then uh, spelling out this condition that sigma of Q is equal to Q, and you write the action of sigma as uh, we showed it to be before, then you, ha you, you end up with this equation. And uh, this is the conclusion that you have, uh, that a prime divides this index if and only if uh, the Frobenius element as, uh, well, the, the, yes, the, the, the first component of the Frobenius element is one as an eigenvalue, and uh, one of these two conditions are satisfied. And uh, in general, if you take uh, the composite of the L torsion, uh, the health root uh, of P fields, and uh, you, you, you take uh, the natural extension of, uh, of these uh, conjugacy classes uh, to M, then uh, you have this uh, splitting condition in terms of these conjugacy classes. And, uh, and this is uh, exactly the way um, the Chabotarev density theorem tells us uh, that uh, this translates in the fact through the Chibotai density theorem that M divides the index uh, if and only if uh, sigma P is in, uh, in these uh, um, conjugation classes. And, and this is the asymptotic formula, therefore, for such a primes. And, uh, and based on this, uh, on, uh, on this uh, observation, uh, one pretends that all the error terms sums up the way they should, and you're led uh, to this lang trotter primitive points conjecture. Okay, so this is uh, this takes a few slides to to show how this conjecture is uh, is stated, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this is too big respect to M, so that uh, you know the the classical Hooley proof works. It doesn't work, and one has to do other things. And the idea of Ram was uh, instead of considering the first uh, the rank one. Uh, uh, Lang Trotter conjecture, there's a higher rank uh, Lang Trotter conjecture, and Ram could prove it if the rank of the elliptic curve was at least uh, 18, then, uh, um, you know, unexpectedly for an elliptic curve of very high rank, the Hooley's proof actually carries out, and, uh, and this is one, one of his results. And uh, I'm going to tell more about his results in a minute. Time is running out very quickly. So, uh, this, is, uh, this is the definition of the lang trotter primitive points density. And uh, if you just look at this and you take into account this existence of the Sir Bashmakov conductor, uh, meaning a number such that whenever another number is co-prime to this, then uh, uh, the GM is all the fine group, then you can always uh, write uh, this product here. And, uh, and if you compute uh, the number of elements in the Galois group, uh, uh, L Galois group, when L does not divide the uh, 
so it's Bashmakov conductor, and you compute the number of elements in the, in the union of conjugacy classes, you immediately know which is the, the, the naive density and which is the entanglement factor, just by, by considering this, uh, this decomposition. So here's uh, how you get uh, the decomposition of, uh, of the density. And, uh, and well, uh, I would like to mention that uh, for CM curves, uh, uh, morally the thing is the same, but the Galois representations are not the same. And for this reason, everything has be, to be uh, corrected a bit. Rajiv uh, Ram uh, in, in that same paper that I've been talking for the last few minutes about, they looked at the case of, uh, of uh, CM elliptic curves, and for the CM elliptic curves, they only dealt with primes which uh, uh, are decomposed uh, in, uh, in the case of CM curves, primes which are decomposed in the ring of integers, and for these primes on the GRH, they could write uh, uh, the asymptotic formula, and furthermore, they could classify various cases for which the density in, 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 in this uh, theorem is not zero, namely they, they checked this uh, five out of nine uh, class number one quadratic fields. And here's, uh, here's an expression for that uh, density which appears in, in their paper. And still there's this mysterious uh, entanglement factors, factor here which is a rational number. Um, and uh, it, it is a, expressed in terms of certain density of primes so that have some particular splitting conditions. And later also, Chen and Yu, two Chinese mathematicians, they went back to the case of CM, uh, um, CM elliptic curves. They looked at uh, uh, Rajiv and Ram work and uh, some speculations. And uh, anyways, I want to do it quickly because I'm running out of time. And um, they, they dealt with uh, other cases, uh, other missing cases. So there were five quadratic fields of class number one. Their skew square root of minus seven where, uh, where elliptic curves always have their, their two, two torsion rational. And they dealt with the last three class number one, uh, um, the last, uh, last three class number one quadratic fields. They, they dealt with the vanishing of this density here. So. So, so the, the problem seems, uh, seems to be, uh, at least what, what, I, what I believe to be one of the problems is the vanishing of this density. And as I started, this density certainly vanishes when all the two torsion is rational, and also vanishes when there is a GCD which is non-zero between uh, uh, K, where P is K times a rational points, and, and the number of elements of torsion. So and this is another case in which uh, uh, the density vanishes, and one, one might think that these are the only two cases in which vanishing, uh, the, the density vanishes. So, for example, one might think uh, that if you take an elliptic curve which doesn't have torsion, and if we, this elliptic curve has, uh, has rank one, and you take a generator, then uh, the density that you compute for that generator should be different from zero, right? Well, that's not the case, that's not the case. Uh, there are some subtle examples. So if you take uh, this elliptic curve here, uh, I don't know if you recognize this. Uh, uh, well, this is an elliptic curve with, uh, with conductor 189. It's 189 B3 in the Cremona stable. And so we, uh, this is, uh, it has rank one, torsion one, and this is a generator for this group. And uh, if, you, if you try and, uh, and compute primes for which this generator is primitive, uh, you go all the way up to 2 to the 31, you find no primes. So uh, this, is a, this is a group rank 1, no torsion, and still this generator is never primitive. So we wanted to study this uh, the situation, which was kind of a surprise to us that this could happen. And uh, well, we will show that uh, actually, we will show it in, in very quickly, but in two different ways that uh, that in, in this, uh, this uh, generator is never primitive for all primes, so we took away two uh, because, uh, the, because of this um, denominators, three and seven because the conductor is 27 times seven. 
And uh, so we'll, we'll show that for every prime, either E of F, P contains all the three torsion, or uh, the P is three times Q, uh, where Q is another element of uh, E of F, P. Therefore, in both cases, oops, in both these cases, it happens that three uh, divides the index, and therefore, the point cannot be primitive. And uh, so here's the conductor, here's the generator, here's the group. Well, if you call R this point, then with a little computation, you find that the nine uh, three torsion points can be written uh, with, with this uh, expression here. So omega is a cube root of one. And so these are defined over this Kumerian field, which has uh, S3 as a, as a Galois field. So. Um, you see R and uh, its opposite and all the conjugates. You get six here plus two here plus one. So you have nine. And, uh, and then if you want to compute also the, the, the cube uh, uh, root of P, then uh, in there you have nine points and you can actually compute all of them really, very easily. And um, well, the two observations that I would like to do about this computation, the first one is that you see you have uh, three Galois orbits. The first one uh, is defined over omega and uh, the cube root of nine. The second one, omega and the cube root of seven. And the third one is the cube root of 21. And these are the three Galois orbits. Each one contains three points, right? So I have labeled them accordingly. So. The third one is always uh, a real point. Okay, so we want to prove uh, that uh, we want to prove that either all the three torsion is uh, rational, or P modulo P, capital P modulo lower P, is uh, is always uh, three times another point. And uh, here, uh, how this is done? Well, in the case where P is congruent to three modulo or two modulo three, then all these numbers are defined modulo. Uh, modulo P, and therefore um, there's always uh, at, at least one point which is, uh, which is uh, uh, a three torsion point, and furthermore there are these three um, cubic root of P which are also in FP, so in all cases P, the order, um, the index of P is divisible by three, okay, so this is the easy case. And uh, the more subtle case is when P is common to one modulo three, then in this case, uh, uh, all the cube uh, root of uh, three are in FP. And uh, in FP, there is always uh, uh, this, um, this is always the group, uh, the three torsion point which survives modulo P. And then you just, uh, just consider the cases and, and you study them uh, using the, the cubic symbol. So uh, you have that all the three torsion in, uh, is in FP, where if there is the third point, and this happens when the, the cube root of 63 is in FP, and this is equivalent to the fact that this cubic uh, residue is one. So if uh, this cubic residue is one, we're done. If this cubic residue is omega, omega square is done uh, similarly, then you look at the cubic residue of seven. If this is one, then you have these three points. If this is omega, then you look at nine over p cubic residue, you have these three points. In all possible cases, by using these uh, properties of cubic residues, you, you obtain that uh, the, 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 the index is always divisible by three. So this is what, what we would call a very ignorant proof, ignorant in the sense that uh, you just uh, you get your hands very dirty with, uh, uh, with, uh, with your hands. Well, uh, but uh, there is a, a very, uh, there's, uh, you know, just uh, maybe a more intelligent, uh, a further reaching proof is just uh, by looking uh, at, uh, at the definition of the Langtrotter constant. If you go back and you compute G of L and you compute S of L, you realize that in this special case of 189B3, S of L and G L are exactly the same. And, uh, this is, uh, and uh, this is actually a simple computation to, to make. And this is, this is an example in which uh, S of L and G of L are the same. And this seems to be exactly the right condition on which uh, 
um, you have a, a point which is not a, a torsion point, an infinite order point, and this infinite order point is never primitive, okay? And, uh, and, the, and these are the computation that, uh, in this case, in the case of 189B3S, G3 and S3 are the same. And uh, here's a, a few more examples where this happens. And uh, many of these, uh, they always have the Galois subjective at, except at three, but there are some cases in which the Galois is not, is not subjective at five, and even fewer cases in which the Galois is not subjective at seven. So for each of them, you have uh, to make uh, uh, this computation of either computing GL and SL or, or just uh, get your hands dirty with uh, with, uh, with residue, health residues. And uh, well, these are our empirical observation that in all single cases that we checked, uh, then it seems that um, the image of Galois uh, uh, at, at this prime L is always a Borel subgroup of this sort. And uh, we notice this happening for L equal uh, three, five, and seven. And uh, in this case also, uh, the action of Galois, one of L times P, has L distinct uh, orbits, and uh, and this uh, also implies that the, um, the Galois translations are uh, always uh, properly contained uh, in the torsion points. And uh, this latter two, they seem to be equivalent, but I haven't been able to show it, but it shouldn't be that difficult. And uh, I guess I'm almost finished. I just would like to show you some, uh, some numerics. So if you look at curves with conductor up to uh, 9,999, you, you get this many curves. Of this curve, so this many have rank one. Out of this uh, 31,000, uh, this is the number of curves which have rank one and torsion one. Of this, we find 577 curves in which uh, there are no primitive points. No primitive points no, whatsoever. These 577, there are 533 in which uh, uh, the Galois is always subjective except at three, and at three you have uh, this Borel. Uh, 41, which is always subjective except at five, and you have this Borel. And three, which is always subjective except at seven, and this is the Borel. And these are the three curves at which we have this phenomenon at seven. And uh, we also looked at curves of rank one and torsion two, and then you have 2,541 curves in which there are never so I guess, you know, this is, uh, I mean, 2,541 uh, is, uh, it's kind of, it looks like a non-zero proportion of all curves with rank one and torsion two. I mean, for, for these curves, the long trotter conjecture is proven simply, simply because there's nothing to prove in that case, right? But the case in which this happened, uh, to us at least, it's surprisingly big, you know? and. Uh, well, we look at also at all, all 1,058 curves with uh, rank one and torsion three, but this phenomenon never happens, at least up to here. And uh, 76 curves with the cyclic four torsion, no primitive points, 11, six torsion, no, no primitive points. And then we did uh, uh, the rest of curves, they always contain at least one primitive point. And then we did uh, all the same computation uh, with curves between uh, 10,000 and 20,000. We, we get this number, so it's, it's quite amazing that uh, there's a really very, very similar behavior, right? We got 577 in the first lot and 545 in the second lot. I don't know whether this is, uh, it can be explained in terms of uh, some heuristics, but uh, Anyways, uh, between uh, 10,000 and 20,000, we also found uh, an one single elliptic curve, this one, in which uh, it has rank one, it has torsion three, and no primitive points. So this is the first one we found. And, and the image of Galois is, is, uh, is a split carton in that case. And uh, we'll keep on checking. And uh, um, we are tempted for making, according to all this, some conjecture to which are the exact cases in which uh, you can have the vanishing of the Langtrotter constant, but we, we're not uh, certainly ready to do it. And, um, but uh, my time is over precisely, so I'll stop here and I'll thank you for your attention.